Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs in Switzerland. I'm Andrew, and on the bench today is a Hot Wheels Volkswagen Beetle, a classic for the ages. I've worked on a couple of Beetles in the past. They've all been Gaslands type builds or burned out bodies on top of war rigs. This one's going to get a very complete customization too, but hopefully still recognizable at the end. This is my entry to the super huge ginormous build-off sponsored by Paul at Diecast Graveyard. This is part one of what will be five builds in total, taking up most of a calendar year, I presume. There will be judging and points awarded for first through tenth places each time. The one with the most total aggregate points will be the winner of a full-size recreational vehicle or something like that. <laughs> Just kidding. The theme for this part one build is your favorite band. Any casting just has to be 1 to 64 scale. I've chosen a beetle for a very good reason. Guessing starts now. The Beetle, officially the Volkswagen Type 1, is an economy car that was manufactured and marketed by the German company Volkswagen VW from 1938 until 2003. It has a rear engine design with a two-door body style and is intended for five occupants. Not sure I've ever seen five people unfold out of one. You probably already know the story that the people's car, which is the literal translation of Volkswagen in German, was commissioned by the leader of Nazi Germany, Adolf Hitler, who wanted a cheap, simple car to be mass-produced for his country's new road network called the Reichsautobahn. Lead engineer Ferdinand Porsche and his team took until 1938 to finalize the design. The result was the rear-engine Beetle, the longest-running and most manufactured car of a single platform ever made. The last original Type 1 VW Beetle, number 21,529,464, rolled off the production line at Puebla, Mexico on July 30, 2003, 65 years after its original launch. That final edition is now on display at the Volkswagen Museum, next door to me in Germany. Surprisingly, in the 1999 Car of the Century competition to determine the world's most influential car in the 20th century, the Type 1 Beetle came in fourth after a Ford Model T, the Mini, and the Citroen DS. Hmm. There are merely a few short weeks left in 2023, and next weekend I'm going to show you all of my customs in an annual year-end review. The final build will be the Four Horsemen Invitational, and the January Four Horsemen theme is exotics. And I'm taking a break in early January to do a little bit of traveling. Time for a dry fit to make sure all of these extensive body mods are meshing together the way that I need them to. As is often the case, Google Images have provided me with several inspiration pics that I'm using for this style of beetle. The glass has been untouched, but you'll see I had to chop down the back portion of the interior from underneath body goes on top, lots of room for a 3D printed engine in the back, I'm actually going to change from that model. And I thought I'd do a custom interior for the Beetle. So I cut away the floor, the seats, the dash, and I'm adding some new sides. The lower portion. I cut out a little dashboard with an opening for a 3D printed steering wheel. There's room for some instrumentation on there. Okay, that fits. You see a nose spoiler on the chassis. And here's a rear wing that I've cut out of styrene sheets. 
looks like that. Magically in and out of the primer, both the body and the interior assembly. No trouble so far. I want to give a community shout out to Coco Diecast. As always, there's a link in the description that you can click on and immediately find yourself transported over there to see some outstanding customization work. I hope you're following up on the shout outs. As I discover them, I'd like to pass them on to you. Still no clues about which band I'm going with here as I apply a midnight black base coat to the Beetle. This is Vallejo Premium Black. It's an acrylic paint, goes on right out of the bottle. I use the same thing on the custom interior, although lots of detailing is still to come. That gets clear coated and sets up before I put any masking tape on. Then I shoot red as a secondary color, and it unmasks beautifully. That's one of my favorite car color combos. I did the dash and the steering wheel in the same red, and there's just enough room to put a couple of dashboard instruments in there. Here's a 3D printed twin turbo engine to be rear mounted on the back of the Beetle. Of course, that will get properly detailed. But first, some final touches on the interior. I use a household straight pin as a stick shift. One 3D printed racing seat and a NOS bottle with a label on it. Dashboard gets glued into place and a simple roll bar behind the driver so it looks like this. Pretty cool, I think. Well, you may have already guessed which direction I'm going in today. It's a Beatles Beetle. That's my all time favorite band. John, Paul, George, and Ringo are regarded widely as the most influential band of all time. My earliest album collection included Revolver, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, The White Album, Abbey Road, The Magical Mystery Tour, Rubber Soul, Let It Be, even non-fans know these names. Here's a special decal. Those who know, know. <laughs> There's only one number that can go on the doors. The Fab Four. The Beatles climbed a musical mountain and it happened real time during my childhood and formative adolescent years. This album cover is one of the most imitated pictures of all time. Now we descend into the realm of the impossibly small with a custom set of 3D printed shock absorbers this size. Incredible detail is possible now with the resin printers. I use a toothpick to paint just the coils. There they are, rear mounted. And that's a look at an upgraded set of Sam Ed wheels. You can visit them at any of these addresses and make an order for your next custom project. They've got lots of new inventory and no doubt just what you need. There's really no reassembly involved in this project. I've been putting the pieces together as I go. But you'll notice the chassis and the body are still separate. I put rhinestone headlights on there. Engine got all detailed, as did a little bit on the undercarriage with my logo. There's a beautiful gloss shine on the midnight black body. The front shocks are permanently mounted on that piece. And there's a little magnet right there. I'm not using screws to hold this together. The magnets will catch. 
and therefore you can take the top off and look at the interior because so much work went into that area. But it does look pretty sharp altogether. I like the color combination. Always fond of the Beetle. The new wheels look just the part. And there it goes. What do you think? <coughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I like it too. We're all products of our particular generation, and I don't think there's any debate. So I've ultimately taken the number one all-time selling car and used it as the model for the number one all-time selling rock band. I hope you like my reimagining of the Beatle for this theme, and I welcome your respectful comments below. Tell me what you think, and why not tell me what your favorite band is, too. I'll still be Beatles superfan number one. Here I am in Liverpool on Penny Lane, in Prague at the John Lennon Memorial Wall, and because I never got to see them live, my wife Petra bought tickets for a cover band right here in Basel, and it was outstanding. I'm not entirely sure what the final steps are in Build Part 1. Perhaps some cars are going to be exchanged, I don't know. So I'm putting mine in a custom display case. I invite you to watch all of the super huge ginormous build-off videos that will be uploaded this weekend. And one more thing, congratulations to me on being officially retired as of this week. Let the fun begin. Thanks for visiting my channel today. Come on back soon and often. It's coffee time. Thank you.